A vast ocean of green, breathing in the carbon dioxide that we pump into the air, helping to slow the pace of climate change. But the lungs of the planet are unwell. Forest biomass is important because biomass describes how much matter there is in the vegetation and it's important for climate because half of that mass is carbon. So when forest biomass changes, you know, for example if it's destroyed by deforestation, that carbon is released as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And this is a very big source of, uh, of emissions to the, to the atmosphere. For example, it's actually six billion tonnes of carbon per year about. That's one, billion, one tonne of carbon per person for every man, woman and child on the planet. So it's part of the climate problem. But forests are also part of the climate solution because as they grow, they take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And so they're central to the world's attempt to reduce global warming. The biomass mission is a specific mission designed to measure forest biomass across the globe. It uses a very special wavelength, which is the, called P-band. It's about 70 centimetres. It's the first time this has ever been used in space from, to measure anything really, because it's not been legal up until now. And it's particularly sensitive to forest biomass. Biomass is an Earth Explorer mission of the European Space Agency, ESA. Biomass is really important to the UK. Quite a few years back, there was an open competition for scientists to invent new missions that are needed to measure the parameters of our Earth. And Sean Quigan from University of Sheffield won that competition against all the um, many, many inputs from across European scientists, the European Space Agency, and industry then bid to build it. And we're really proud that Airbus in the UK won that bid to, to be the prime contractor. So I think this is the first time an Earth Explorer, which is a, a fully uh, ESA mission, an ESA research mission, has been both invented and built in the UK. The UK has expertise in both the scientific part of the mission and in the technical part of the mission. For the science side, there are people like me who's an expert on radar and these sorts of sensors and calibrating them and actually models for carbon cycle and measuring carbon on the ground. On the technical side, we've got people who work down in Airbus who are actually building this mission and putting it all together. So it's both aspects and why the UK is essential to make this mission a success. This is a European Space Agency mission, and so it's not just the UK, quite the contrary, it's spread across expertise, not within in Europe, but also across from the US. So I lead a science team, which is, I think, 11 different nationalities, where it's an international effort to produce this thing. The collaboration of people working on measurements on the ground in countries across the planet are essential for the mission to work, because we need to make sure the measurements are, are accurate, and that countries have confidence in using them. So people are making measurements that they trust on the ground are part of the calibration and validation process for the satellite. Well, as science lead for this mission, I've got the privilege of leading a, a group of people who are absolutely expert in a whole range of areas, which are all, will use the, the, mission, the mission to be a success. I've got people who work in, in radar and specialist techniques with radar, I've got people who work in calibration, people who work with people who are ecologists, and carbon modellers and also people who work in other aspects of things, of things that can be done with biomass like for example measure ice and measure um, the, uh, the, through deserts to measure subsurface areas of, de of deserts. We can measure biomass uh, with really often intensive and at the same time costly ground measurements. Uh, in, in some cases these uh, measurements are destructive so uh, when possible we try to avoid this kind of things but other times can be just normal uh, inventory measurements of vegetation like uh, different parameters like height of the trees and the white of the trunks and then we try to relate this to, to biomass. We need measurements from space because our field observations, our ground measurements are not enough to actually characterize the biomass globally. We have uh, different areas in the world like in the center of the Amazon or in the, in the very north uh, of Russia where we cannot really estimate or go with uh, field teams to estimate biomass. So satellites are really, really important and really key to be able to uh, characterize biomass in those areas. And it gives us actually for the first time the opportunity to be able to measure biomass mass and areas with really high biomass density. 
So I think everybody knows and the public knows just how important it is to take climate action. One of those things we can do is plant more trees or stop chopping them down. How do we know with the vast forests around the world that deforestation is stopping? Biomass is going to provide us with a tool for measuring the carbon from the forests that we have. And without that, it's very difficult to understand the global picture of carbon that's coming from our forests and therefore how well we're doing with taking climate action and stopping dangerous climate change. The international community is currently carrying out an unprecedented collaboration in between different space agencies, uh, research scientists, as well as in-country organizations that are in charge of forest monitoring to be able to estimate and to give the best estimates of biomass uh, that we can do at, at global level. For this reason, uh, the European Space Agency, ESA and NASA have been developing an online platform that will allow collaboration in between scientists and uh, professionals on the field where we can combine not only data but also work with algorithms and satellite data. This will allow us to estimate biomass more accurately and at the same time doing it in a very transparent way. The biomass mission gives you amazing opportunities to do things for the climate. This is the first mission of its type in space, which will have a legacy of a decade or more. It needs young people to come and start using the data long after it's gone up into space. So if you're looking for an interesting career that involves so many interesting aspects of the climate and working with great people in, in other countries, work on these data. Mm -hmm.